I've been thinking lately. When my grandchild is born, I'll be the first to hold the baby, right? You just have to give birth, and then I'll take care of the rest. Good evening, Sophia. I certainly plan to take some time off after the birth, and I'd like to do my best to take care of the baby, too. Well, I don't expect you to do your best. You'll be fine because I'm here, and it won't be good for my grandchild if I let you take care of it. But I'm a mother, and I want to raise my baby myself. I have my doubts about your ability as a mother. You can't cook, you can't clean, and you can't raise a child. Leave everything to me. Sophia, I think that's a little harsh. I'm trying, and I intend to get better. You don't need to try. I'll be just fine without you. As long as I have my grandchild, I don't need you. Oh, no. I didn't approve of you as a wife from the very beginning. But my son chose you, so I had no choice but to accept you. But you're really useless. What do you mean by that? You can't do anything, can you? You're not good at housework and work, and you're just a burden to my son. I just want the best for him. Sophia, you're wrong. I want to cooperate with my husband. You don't need to cooperate. You're standing in his way. My son has bigger dreams. He doesn't have time for you. Please don't say that. My husband and I want to build a future together. You're overreacting. You're the reason his future is so dark. When my grandchild is born, I will educate well and raise the baby without your influence. Don't worry. But... It's because you can't do anything. My son regrets that he shouldn't have married you. That's why I'm just trying to help him. Sophia, that's really terrible. Anyway, we'll be fine without you. But... Hi, Amelia. Just when I thought you finally got pregnant. You do so many unnecessary things to me. What? It's so obvious. I know exactly what you're doing. What do you mean? You're not going to let me hold a grandchild, are you? What a wife you are. What are you talking about? I've never thought anything like that. My son told me that you're planning to have a home birth. And the baby is going to be born soon. What kind of an idea is it to not spend that precious time with me? First of all, isn't a home birth just like saying that I don't support you enough? Sophia, I never think that you don't support me enough. I'm thinking of going to my parents' home about two months before the due date. Why are you going back to your hometown? I really don't understand. I'm here too, you know. I've done a lot of preparation for you, and you want me to let all that effort go to waste? Do you think your parents' home is such a special place? I hope you understand a little better how much I have done for you and the baby. This is my first time raising a child, and frankly, I'm filled with anxiety. The birth itself is a big challenge, and raising a child afterwards is also scary for me. I'm sure I'll be a physical and mental wreck after the birth. If I stay with my parents, my mother will be there, and I will have the support of my entire family. I want to get through my first time raising a child with as little burden as possible. So I'll do everything for you. Don't worry. I'm experienced and I'm perfectly capable of taking care of the baby and doing all the housework. You'll feel much safer here than back at your parents' house. So why don't you just stay here with me? My parents can't come over there often. I want my parents to be there for me at least during the birth. I would like to be there during the birth, too. I was looking forward to the birth of my first grandchild. Why won't you give me that opportunity? I want to watch the growth of my grandchild, and I want to strengthen my bond with my grandchild through daily care, you know? It's really sad. I'm sorry, but I'll be back in about a month after giving birth. 
I was even going to be there to witness the birth, you know? You have no idea how much I was looking forward to this moment. I was so excited to witness the birth of my first grandchild, and you ruined that special moment for me. I can't believe I'm being treated like this. What? Witnessing the birth? Are you saying, like, you're going to be standing by my side while I give birth? Yes! Because having my son standing by your side wouldn't help, would it? That's why I was going to be there. I think that will be difficult. Why? I would be embarrassed. We're both women. I have been through childbirth myself, so there's nothing to be embarrassed about. And it's more embarrassing to show your crotch to other people, you know? I mean, many doctors and nurses will see you when you're giving birth. I think the people at the hospital are different. And they're medical staff with expertise. They're very professional in the birth setting, and I'm comfortable with them. Besides, childbirth is a very private moment. I don't want anyone outside of my family to be able to see it. Oh, I'm not considered family? I am so sorry to hear that. I was going to be the first to hold my grandchild. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. We'll be the ones living together in the future. What? Are you really thinking about living together in the future? Do you have plans for us to live together in the future? I don't remember talking about this with my husband, so I'm really surprised. Can you tell us exactly what you're thinking about? What are you talking about? Of course we will be living together. Because my son is an only child. Who is going to take care of me in the future? But, Sophia, you said before that you don't want to live together. At that time, your husband had the same opinion and we agreed to it. I'm surprised and confused by the sudden talk of living together. My husband is just being stubborn. He always has a habit of hiding his true feelings and being stubborn. That's why he says he doesn't want to live with you, but he doesn't really feel that way at all. He's really looking forward to living with you guys. I'm sure everyone will be happy. Oh, really? Besides, it's better to watch the baby with as many adults as possible. Amelia, you're going back to work someday, right? Yes, I plan to work again eventually. Then it's definitely better to live together. In the first place, the reason why you guys built such a big house is because you wanted us to live together, right? No, not really. We were both talking about getting a big dog when we have kids. That's why we built the house as spacious as possible. Don't be silly. You've made a guest room. That's supposed to be my room, right? We really didn't intend it that way. We chose a large house so that we can have more children in the future. We chose a spacious house so that we can spend a relaxing time with friends and family when they come to visit. Of course we would love to have you visit too. But we didn't build a big house with the intention of living together. Well, when you come back from your hometown, you leave the child care to me. I'll raise my grandchild as the heir to our family. Well, for the time being, we'll do our best. What are you talking about? Neither you nor my son have any knowledge or experience in child rearing, do you? I'm not going to leave it to you. No, I'm really fine. You don't have to be like that. Really. You don't have to worry about it. I'll do everything. You don't have to do anything. I'll do all the cleaning, laundry, and cooking. You can just wrap yourself up in the blanket and take a nice, relaxing nap now. For the sake of your baby, you just need to relax. Amelia, may I have a word with you? My son told me not to come home. What is this all about? I've been helping you every day, and I'm really shocked that he would suddenly say something like that to me. Why should he be so cold to me? Sophia, I really appreciate your concern for me. But I get tired easily, especially during pregnancy, and I really need some quiet time alone. I'm really sorry. You mean, you're annoyed if I go to your house? 
I'm really surprised you feel that way. I thought I was doing the best I could for you and the baby, but I was actually annoying you? No, it's not that you were annoying me. I really appreciate your help. It's just that I couldn't relax with you around, you know? I really appreciate the courtesy of your help, but my energy is especially low during pregnancy. I need as much rest as possible. So, that's your problem, right? I'm doing all the housework for you. And I was shocked when he suddenly told me not to come. Besides, I always tell you that you can take a nap, don't I? Yes, but you keep talking to me. I'm talking to you because you answer me. If you're sleeping, why don't you just ignore me? And he even told me that he doesn't want to live with me. You made him say that, didn't you? I didn't decide on my own. My husband and I discussed it thoroughly before we came to this conclusion. My husband and I both want to live and raise our child together. We thought it was the best choice for both of us. That's an absolute lie. My son has always been a child who listens to me. You told him you didn't want to live with me, didn't you? It's disgusting that you let him tell me that. It really hurt my feelings. It was the biggest shock I've had in years. I even cried. I'm sorry. I don't understand why you don't want me to live with you in the first place. I do everything for you, don't I? I've told you I'll take care of your baby too. From the very beginning of our marriage, we never wanted to live with each other's parents. And we want to do our best to raise our child on our own. So you're saying you're never going to let me take care of the baby? If something happens, you're never going to let me help? That depends on the situation. We will do our best not to cause you any trouble. That's a lie. What? I thought that you would live with me in the future. I accepted you as my daughter-in-law, you know? And I understand your feelings. I really appreciate the fact that you have put a lot of thought into things for us. But we have our own lives and ways of thinking. And it is difficult to do everything according to your wishes. What's your problem with living with me? I really don't understand. Is it really such a big burden to live with me? We just want to live happily together as a family. I think each family has its own way of living. I just don't think I could live with you guys or my own parents either. You don't have to live with your parents. I'm just saying we're okay on our own. You're already messing around. I'm going to have a grandchild, so I'm definitely going to have to live with you. I'm sorry, Sophia. Ask my husband about living together. I can't answer any more questions for you. So just tell him that you will live with us. Then my son would be okay with it. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well. Excuse me. We haven't finished talking yet. I will never accept any other option but to live with you. If you refuse to live with me, I will have you divorce my son. Amelia, what is it with you not contacting me even once? I told you that I'm looking forward to the birth of my grandchild, didn't I? You really are a very inconsiderate person. I have something I really need to talk to you about. You absolutely must answer me. Sophia, it's been a long time. What is the important thing to talk about? Before that, is there anything you want to say to me? I've been supporting the whole time, and I've always valued you as a member of our family. I can't believe that you haven't said anything to me in response to my efforts and feelings. I don't think there's anything I want to say to you. I have always been grateful for your support. I tell you that every time I see you, don't I? You're not even going to apologize? Me? All this time, you've been ignoring my calls, haven't you? And when I went to your house, you've been pretending that you're not there, haven't you? That's because you never listened to my husband. Well, are you saying it's my fault? I'll be honest with you. 
Having you come to our house every day was a huge burden. And even though I refused to live with you, you kept telling me the same thing over and over again. I don't want to use pregnancy as an excuse, but it was very hard for me when I was sick and wanted to lie down. Then why didn't you just make it clear to me? I have told you many times, but you keep interrupting me. Well, you suddenly became very strong when you went back home to have the baby. I'm surprised that you became so bold as soon as you went back to your own family home. You've been so quiet, and now that you're back at home, you're suddenly so bold. No, it's not like that. Well, but now that we've settled the matter, it's okay. What matter? Actually, you don't like me, your mother-in-law, do you? That's why I sold your house. There's no place for you to come back to. What? Since you went back to your parents' home, I've been trying to convince my son and husband. I told them a wife who doesn't live with her husband is not a wife and that we should kick you out. Oh. And then they both finally understood. Wow. We sold your house and we have a buyer. So you and my son should get a divorce. Oh, and if you don't want a divorce, get down on your knees to me. If you swear to change your mind, I'll even consider you moving in with us. Oh, wow. Do you know whose house you sold? What are you saying? It's your house. It's not our house. It's yours. What are you talking about? Why should we sell our house? Your husband made the decision. He said that if he didn't do something, you wouldn't stop your insanity. It seems he has been thinking about it a lot. It's not our fault that you no longer have a house to live in. It's your husband's decision. What? He has always wanted to go back to his hometown. He was so happy. Wait a second. What? You're kidding, right? You're joking, right? Why would I joke about that? Well, selling the house? I didn't hear anything about that. You were trying to sell our house without telling me, right? To be honest, I couldn't believe it. Considering what you had done without consulting us, I can understand why your husband would make the same decision. If you decide things on your own without consulting anyone, why shouldn't others do the same? Shut up. You and I are in different positions. But it's your husband's decision. I don't know anything about it. No. It's impossible. I can't live in the country like that. It's absolutely impossible. Then please talk with him about the rest. I hope you and he will talk it over. I'm thinking about the baby first right now, so I'll leave you now. I'm about to go for my last checkup. Hey, listen to me. Can you help me? I'm in the biggest crisis of my life. Hi, Sophia. The biggest crisis? What's going on? Amelia, I'm in a terrible situation, and there's really nothing I can do about it. When I objected to the move, my husband suddenly said that he was divorcing me. If I don't do something, we might end up divorcing. Is there any way you can help me? I don't think so. Huh? So you agree with him? Don't you think it's terrible that we're divorcing? The reason he had to sell the house in the first place is because of you being arrogant all the time, isn't it? Arrogant? After I got pregnant and quit my job, you started coming over to our house every day, right? You came to my house saying you would help me with the housework. But you were actually hanging around the house all the time talking to me. I did a little bit of housework too, didn't I? You just cooked what you wanted to eat with our food and ate it. You left the utensils and dishes in the kitchen without washing them. I remember there were days when you even took a bath. That's because the bath in your house is big and clean. I wanted to take a long bath. And while taking a long bath, 
you told me to buy a bottle of wine. You made me make some snacks for you. You didn't want me to rest, did you? I think a pregnant woman should move around a little. I was moving. Cleaning up the bathroom after you bathe. And washing dishes after you use them. I was moving more than before I got pregnant. You were? I'm sorry. I'm not a detail-oriented person. But if you thought so, you should have told me. I told you the other day. I told you many times. Amelia, your way of speaking is too indirect. I want you to be more straightforward. I'm your daughter-in-law. I can't speak so strongly to you. Then from now on, you should be more direct. I don't get angry at you for giving me a warning. You can tell me how you really feel. I won't say it. When I asked my husband to tell you about us not wanting to live together with you, you were furious, and you even told me to get a divorce. So I'm not going to tell you anything anymore. My husband and I would like to cut you off from our life. What? Don't be like that. I wasn't angry at the time. I was just sad. I didn't really want you to divorce him. I don't trust anything you say anymore. We had decided not to live together. You said you would move in with us on your own. You tried to divorce me and my husband and sell our new house, right? Don't you think it's not surprising that we would break off the relationship with you? I was so excited about having a grandchild. I was really happy. I thought that if we moved in together, we could be together forever. I'm glad you feel that way, but it's the same with my parents. If you hadn't gone so crazy about it, I'm sure you would have had more chances to see the baby than my parents. Okay, well, I'll give up living with you. So please forgive me. If you forgive me, I'm sure my husband will give up moving too. That's impossible. He has already decided to sell the house. You're supposed to move out by the end of next month, right? Then convince him. I don't want to live in the country. I don't think it's up to me to convince him. He doesn't listen to me. Besides, he said he will divorce me if I don't want to move. Then why don't you get a divorce? What are you talking about? I can't do that. How will I live by myself if I get divorced now? Sophia, what's happening now is all your fault. It may have started with my pregnancy, but my husband and your husband have always been tired of your attitude. I've done so much for them. I've always been there for them. It was a burden for both of them. My husband is quite angry that you have caused me so much trouble this time. He doesn't even want the baby to see you. What? You're always thinking what's best for yourself, and that's why this is happening. If your husband even asks you for a divorce, why don't you go ahead and divorce him? Let me stay with you for a while. What? I'm not sure I'm ready to move back to his hometown. I have friends here, and there are many restaurants I want to go to. Let me move in with you for a few months. You still don't understand, do you? We don't want to live with you. Please think about why your husband decided to move out. I've thought about it. So I admit it was my fault, okay? But you're all so selfish. You don't care about my feelings at all. That's what you've been doing to everyone around you. In fact, even now, I'm exhausted from taking care of my newborn son. Please don't ask for help from someone who's just finished giving birth a few days ago. Amelia, I'm really in trouble. Please help me. I can't help you. There's nothing I can do for you. If you can't convince my husband, then talk to my son. I'm sure my son will listen to what you have to say. I think it would be more effective to have you talk to him instead of me. I don't think I can do that. Don't say that. You need to talk to him and convince his father to reconsider. You are the only one I can count on. I'm really in trouble. Sophia, I don't want to meddle too much in the affairs between you and your husband. 
I have received a lot of sarcasm and harsh words from you in the past. And I don't think you realize how much you have hurt me. When I think back to the stress and exhaustion I went through during my pregnancy, I just can't bring myself to help you. Your problems should be solved by yourself. I have no intention of getting involved in this issue. To be honest, I don't feel like doing anything for you right now. Amelia, don't say such a cold thing. I am your mother-in-law. Please respect me and help me. Please, Amelia. It seems that Sophia really didn't want to get a divorce, so she decided to move out of the house in tears. However, the night before moving to the countryside, she was in desperation. She screamed and yelled until late at night, entered other people's property without permission, and just gone crazy. She caused the trouble in the neighborhood and even got the police involved. My husband was also called in to deal with the situation, and he was furious. My father-in-law scolded her severely and she moved to the countryside. After moving to the countryside, she became quiet and depressed. I wonder if she finally realized the seriousness of her actions and reflected on them. I am so grateful that my father-in-law made up his mind after seeing how she was treating me. And I successfully had a baby. A healthy baby boy. My husband and I are now struggling together to raise our child. I would like to continue to watch my child grow and spend happy times together with my family.